Hi, come on in. Uh, sit down. Uh, for the other lecture I'd like to talk about this week is uh, the world population. And this year we uh, we hit seven billion people in the world, which is which is a lot of people. And believe it or not, a third of that population consists of adolescents and youth, in which ninety percent live in developing countries. And it's also predicted that they will be seeking freedom, participation, dignity, and the right to sexual and reproductive health. And we've almost seen that to some degree. Uh, already have started in with this world unrest. Uh, developed countries like the United States have a lower uh, rate of production but in spite of that uh, even with reproduction has decreased in developing countries from six children on average per woman in 1950 to two and a half today but it just uh, the population rate is still alarming. Uh, um, Africa as a continent alone is projected to double its population by 2050. Uh, the U.S. population is also uh, projected to increase. Um, what are some of the problems that are related to uh, population increase? Well obviously uh, we're going to have to feed, figure out a way to feed 7 billion people. And not only that, to do it while we're experiencing climate change, when we look at uh, uh, productive areas like the, the, the western U.S. with severe drought, uh, providing fresh water, uh, that's a problem here in the United States already, and in other countries as well. Uh, not only that, providing energy, we can't continue to use carbon-based fuels. Uh, what is it in China and in, in the city of Beijing is o almost to the point it's not livable due to uh, pollution from burning coal. In the United States we have 5% of the world population and yet we use 20% of the world's energy. And as a nation we consume more energy per capita than any country in the world. So we, we're not doing our part here either. Um, there's no simple answer. For example, when you consider the energy use per capita, a woman in India would have to have 10 children before she would consume as much energy as an average woman in the United States. So it's not just related to population. There's other factors that we're going to have to look at as well. Uh, Jeremy Rifkin is a uh, is a scholar that I like some of his ideas as he thinks about this problem. He describes energy from renewable sources such as sunlight or wind um, or even water as distributive energy. And he identifies buildings as the greatest source of energy consumption. So in his vision he sees the world built building an energy grid and where we're able to store energy the same way we store information on flash drives and hard drives, we'll be able to store energy in a system. Uh, each building will be able to do this and then we'll be able to share energy through this grid. And it's a system he kind of calls distributive capitalism and it's, it's, uh, it's a system of sharing uh, to help with the survival. Uh, he also, Rifkin has a theory where he describes the evolution of consciousness and he makes a case that throughout history anytime there's a change in energy and communication, in other words we get a convergence in the change of energy and communication it results in the evolution of a, a new world consciousness and he claims that today empathy is evolving as a new world consciousness. And if you think about this, um, we already have distributive communication which is the internet and the social media sites. We're seeing uh, the power of this. As a matter of fact, uh, Gene, Gene Houston descri recently described this distributive communication, this social media 
as a new world superpower and it's not a country yet it is a force that has to be reckoned with we saw this in the ukraine and uh, right now uh, uh, and egypt uh, has been actually been through two revolutions with this uh, the arab spring we're seeing unrest in brazil um, we had the occupy movement here in the united states and so Rifkin thinks this distributive communication and the need for distributive energy that's going to drive uh, empathy as a global uh, consciousness. Uh, Gene Houston also recently said that basically we have 7 billion people on a planet that's designed for 4 billion so the, the, there has to be a new way if, if we intend to sustain this number not only that this it's an increasing number um, population density is also a problem uh, there's there's a recent trend uh, for people to congregate in large cities is probably due to work um, there's more super cities today these are cities with millions of people than we've ever had in the history of, of uh, our planet and not only that, population density is likely to be a new problem um, for Americans as, uh, as we tend to be a culture that places a high value on personal space. Um, so for the week, uh, the second question for week two, uh, watch this uh, video posted in class on population density and then answer the following question what is the relationship between crowding and personal space and then include an example of this relationship in your response um, I've also I, you know I listed these sources uh, um, Rifkin uh, if you google Rifkin uh, uh, and empathic civilization you'll see uh, a link comes up for a YouTube video that's excellent. It's about 10 minutes long and it's animated by, uh, or uh, it's illustrated by uh, um, a company in Great Britain that uh, uh, what they do is they take lectures and and then they uh, they graphically illustrate the lecture while it's being delivered. So what you'll see is Rifkin doing a 10 minute lecture on his book and um, and then the, the company uh, does the illustration. It's, it's worth seeing. And um, let me see here. Let me get to the next one. Um, the world, worldometer here um, shows the increasing population. It, it shows the number uh, consistently uh, increasing. Um, also, uh, the world population balance is another uh, uh, interesting uh, sight to see. So, um, world population is an increasing concern and one that that we're going to have to deal with. Thank you.